Hey there, welcome back to Dental Things. <laughs> Today we're going to be learning how to take good impressions. Because you never want to have a negative impression on someone. Well, at least in dental you kind of do want to have a good one though. Going into this full thing, we're going to go learn about all the components that we need, how to take an impression, proper actual mixing techniques and such that might be beneficial for you to know, and also how to go and work with the patient. So from that, one of the main important things is what the heck are you going to mix in? Now there's a couple of weird techniques that are out there, such as putting our alginate in a bag, throwing in a cup of water, kind of rubbing and spinning it all around and everything, and just kind of piping it into our tray to get a decent impression. Well, that's cool if you kind of want to look like a superstar, and maybe in your other life, you are a chef or something. But for us, usually we're going to be using some type of mixing bowl that we have here. There's a lot of different sizes out there, so make sure that you get the one that fits your hand appropriately. Right now I have one of the bigger mixing bowl sizes, so if I go and pick it up here, I'm going to go and use this... Well, I mean, well, I have this big one right here, and it might fit in my hand, but it's not made for every single person. So, um... Let's go down to more of like a medium size or something like that. And that's what I have here. But, uh, well, and so, well, this is just unacceptable that I have here. It's like one of those Russian nesting dolls. It just keeps getting smaller and smaller. I hope there's no other things under here. Oh, good. Looks like we kind of met our end. But you have your main different sizes here. Really large, medium, a little bit smaller, not going to be used. So make sure you choose one that can fit your palms so that we can go and get a nice hold for our impressions. Over here with our medium sized bowl, make sure I got a nice good cupped feel on this so I can go and squeeze and do all my necessary things with it, is now I'm going to go and get my spatula. You have a couple different types of spatulas where it's going to be a full plastic one, you're going to have ones that are going to have a metal tongue to it, those feel nice and be able to do the job, but the main piece that comes to it is its bend. How firm are our spatulas that we have here? I have a couple spatulas in hand, one of them that's green at the moment, and it's a little bit more firm to the actual bend, so it's really resistant. This feels good if you can put a lot of pressure to go and smash, smear, and smooth our alginate material. But some people might fancy a little bit more of a flexible type of deal to go and do all their mixing and mashing and such. I'm going to stick with a firm one. That's what we're going to use today. Apart from having our mixing equipment, we're going to need to get our impressing equipment. You really want to be impressive at getting your impression trays. We have a couple different sizes here, going from odds and evens, larges to smalls, making a custom form tray, or maybe even going and taking different quadrants or anterior regions specifically for whatever things that we might need to do. Here's an example of all the different types we have here and also there are metal perforated trays that fit the bill just as these do it may just follow the same type of schematic. But you might be asking yourself well now that I have all these different selections of trays that I can use what's gonna be the proper one for me? Well you're gonna need to kind of fit it in to see if it works. The tray that we're gonna be fitting into the mouth should be sized appropriately and like I mentioned you're going to go and pull the cheek off to the side, use the tray to pull the other cheek, and as you go and seat it towards the rear, make sure that you angle it so that you can go and peer and peek in and see if there's room for all the teeth to be impressed, not just in the posterior, but when you see it in the front that the anterior teeth have enough room for the tray to be around not just the teeth in the front, but also in the rear. Make sure you kind of move it side to side and see if there's enough room in the back so we have all the teeth impressed by the alginate. For the most part, it's best to have a little too much room than to have not enough. If you have a larger size tray and it fits in the patient's medium sized mouth and they have no issues with it, that'll work too. Just make sure you have enough impression material to actually fit the bill. And now that we have our impression trays, we need the main star of the game, our alginate impression material. You may have some that comes out of a bucket, that comes out of a bin, that comes out of a box, or might come from a little canister like this. But always, whatever you're going to be working with, try to fluff that powder so it's not condensed or packed in there. So you can go and just roll your bowl to make sure that it gets loosened up real lot nice. Now, out in the field for the most part, a lot of us as assistants will go and eyeball the actual amount that we're gonna get. Sometimes using a sterile spatula to go and kind of scoop it out and get as much that we need. Inside of these little canisters are gonna be these little measuring scoops, which are awesome because if you're going to follow the manufacturer's directions on ratioed scoop to water, this is going to be important to keep by and not throw away. From here, we're going to go into how to scoop properly. Make sure that when you're handling anything that's potentially going to be going into someone's mouth, you're always going to wear some type of protective gloves or something to be able to protect you from their nasty germs. Now that we go over here to our canister, the proper way to do this is to pre-measure how much material that we're going to use for that procedure. And of course, since we're usually always going to be taking our impressions in sets, I like to have two bowls so I can have one material for the upper, one set for the lower, and I don't have to come back and touch my jar at all 
after I've done so. Because I know I'm a rock star and I'm gonna take this impression, no retakes, one time, one go. So going over into my actual impression material, once you went and fluffed your jar just as so, and go and put the lid off to the side, taking your scoop and everything like that, we're gonna go and take a nice heaping scoop just as so. Now, we're not gonna use this heaping scoop of dental material. We're gonna do an unpacked level scoop so that we have the proper amount of water to powder ratio. The way that some people may do that is they go and take their actual spatula. They may go and tap their scoop to shift the voids so everything is filled. And after they give a couple of love taps, they're gonna go and just scrape it off. And now I got a nice level scoop of material. This is obviously gonna go into my bowl so I can go and do my impression later on. Some people may also go and use the little shake and tap technique where they go and get a nice heaping scoop, tap against the side of the jar, and get a relatively level scoop of material, which, will then, which then they will just dash into their bin. So right now I'm gonna be taking a maxillary impression. So I'm gonna need three scoops of powder because I'm gonna be using a large tray in a large mouth. Adjust for size. If you're gonna be doing a medium size, maybe two and a half scoops or two scoops might work fine. And if you go to small, two scoops is definitely all you'll need. And of course, since now we're done at the moment setting up for one of these impressions, I'm gonna go and put my scoop back into my bin, close the lid and make sure that it doesn't fall over onto anything looking like it's a cocaine mess all over in the dental office. That's not how we do it these days anymore. Also, be sure that you're wearing your PPE. Protect those eyeballs and those lungs of yours so that this stuff when it gets airborne doesn't cause any damage on your body. Now that we're ready to go, we have a couple ways that we're gonna introduce water into our system. A real kind of to the manufacturer's directions way is to use the included water measuring cup, where because we have three scoops of powder, we're gonna be using three measures of water. That's gonna be on a jig somewhat looking like this that will usually say one, two, or three, and you go ahead and match that. For those of us that are a little bit more advanced, the way that we go and do this is we take ourselves to the sink. The main thing you wanna make sure that you control is your flow. What's your flow of your water coming out of the sink that you're going to be using? And also the temperature of the water that we're gonna be using. We always want it to be cold, not ice freezing, but we also don't want it to be lukewarm or anything. Just kind of right in the center where the tap water is cold at its neutral position. I'm gonna go take my water knob, not make it a big old fountain that's coming out. I want it to be a nice gentle stream where I can kind of eyeball how much I need at, a, at any moment. Taking my material, the only the main thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get it into a nice lumpy phase where all the powder is mixed in with the water, and now I'm just dealing with pancake mix. So I get a little bit of water, and I eyeball how much I need. Take a little bit off, I'll go and sweep it underneath the sink, and I don't want it too runny, but I want it enough that there's no more powder left over, and now I can get my mix going. Now there's a couple mixing styles that people have where they'll go and either gather it all and slap it on the inside of the bowl and roll and that will get it nice and smooth and that's completely fine. Some will go and take it all into one corner just like this and they'll squeeze their bowl and they're just gonna go and smash it down. And they'll do these nice butterfly movements to get it nice and smooth. Making sure that you have a nice smooth mix at the end of it is important for taking your impression materials. Put pressure in there. We wanna have a nice smooth mix and we don't want it to be cottage cheese-like and have all these little lumps in it. Smooth as possible is the best way to have it. After we get everything nice and filled and mixed, we're gonna go and grab everything. I like to take my spatula and just run it along all the walls and spin my bowl to get a good wad of material. And it should be just as so where it's able to hold its form and it just slightly droops. It doesn't go and run off my spatula. It holds its form for the most part. This is good for impression at the moment. Some people may adjust for their liking and style. So now we go back to the mouth. The main thing I don't want you guys doing is going there and sit there patting it. Because if you're gonna play with like this, it's just gonna get hard on you. And we don't want that to happen. Make sure you get your stuff mixed. Should take about 15 seconds or so when you're experienced enough. Move on to loading at this point. So let's go to load our actual material. If you still feel time that you're mixing and then all of a sudden it's just not pushing anymore, you've already crossed over to the point of no return where it's starting to be just as hard as Play-Doh. You've taken too much time. You wasted your patient's time, material, and now you gotta go and do the sad walk to the sink, rinse it out, clean it up, and start all over again. Make sure that you have your techniques practiced and perfected. So now off to the bin to throw away the sum of alginate that I got here and start all over again. With our material nice and mixed and ready for us, I can go and take a nice wad of everything 
And for my maxillary, the way that we go about loading that is we're gonna go and take it. It's, I like to go and take this material and I like to go and scrape it off right here on the rear portion or the posterior area. Now that I have it here, I'm just gonna go and kind of go and fold it right into the front and now I have my alternate impression. Some people do a lot of dancing and they go and smooth it out. We don't need to do that here. Just get this in, get this in the mouth, make sure there's enough material. On the mandibular arch where we have these two horseshoes, I like feeding it here from the buckle. And I'll go over here to the other side, slide it into place, just as so, and just make sure that it's all filled in wherever it needs to be. Don't need to make it pretty, just get it filled, get it into their mouth, and really push the dickens out of this so that we can get a decent impression. And we just sit there and wait. When we're looking to see if the impression material is fully hardened or anything, the material in the mouth is gonna be around all that hot body. The material that's gonna be in direct contact with the mouth is going to set up faster than what's either on your glove or in our bowl that we have here. So give it a little check. Now that we have this material in there, a little bit sticks out, give it a poke. If it bounces back when you poke it with your nail, that means that it's not ready to come out yet. It's still impressing. And if it does bounce back your little nail divot that you do, that means it is firm and ready to come out. And we can go further from there. So in this situation, when we're going to be getting our patient ready, make sure that you have them at the proper height and level. Because right now, I'm just a little bit too tall for this patient. Because, just like other assistants, we like to go and get right up behind our patient and get them in a chokehold-like manner to make sure we get our good impression. Because it just feels better that way, to come from the rear, as they say. So to get my patient in the right position to where, right where their mouth is, lines up with the center of my chest, or where my sternum is. So, let's go ahead and lift them up a bit. And it's gonna be right about here for me, and this feels comfortable for me. With that, now we can go into the next sequence, which is actually going and mixing and take my impression. Always pre-prepare your patient, make sure, hey, we're gonna be taking this impression. You're not gonna be able to normally feel like you're breathing. I recommend you still do breathe through your nose. Try to keep it away from your mouth because you're gonna be kind of preoccupied and filled up at the moment. Always during this, you're gonna remind them to go and wiggle their toes, shake their nose, think about something else or distract them. So that during this process, if they have a gag reflex, such as myself, that we aren't gonna go and cause a chain reaction throughout the office and then I'm gonna have to whip out the mop bucket and get cleaning action going on. As I go and try it in, I'm just gonna go and pull over here to the side like we mentioned. I'm gonna go and sweep it in from the other side and I'm just gonna go and feel and check. And also check with your patient too. Apart from what you can feel, sometimes you might feel some sore spots or high places that might be acting up. Hey, do you feel anything that hurts right there? Perfect, awesome. So I'm gonna use this tray for you and we're gonna get started here in just a minute, okay? Sometimes it's nice to have a little extra water on the side just in case you kind of measured a little bit too dry. And as I get this going and I can go and smash and slather, some of you guys do these nice little butterfly techniques in here and everything, some of us go and move the whole bowl around in our hand. The main point is to get it nice and creamy. And with that, now that I have this nice and mixed, I can gather everything up in one go as, I, as best as I can. Put that down, grab my maxillary tray, load it from the front, or if you have a preferred way, and make sure that all the areas are nice and filled up. Now that I have my alginate impression ready, Get my patient, okay, we're gonna get this started, okay? I'm gonna come up right, right from behind them, pull their lip off to the side, sweep in from the other, center myself so that their, mac so that their anterior teeth match up with the anterior portion of this, seat in the posterior, seat in the anterior, and pull those lips over the impression. Now that we have this here, we're just gonna sit and wait. Some assistants may like to put cotton rolls so that the patient bites down and holds it in place, I can't trust my patients. I'm gonna hold this for them, and I can go and distract them from here. Whisper sweet nothings in their ear, distract them, get them real creeped out. Maybe they're not gonna be my patient the next time they come around, but I'm gonna make sure that they're kind of really outside of the mind of, I have all this crap in my mouth. And so we move on from this. 
Sometimes your impressions are going to take anywhere from 30 seconds to about a minute to get it set up. Some, if you have a regular set material, will take about three to five minutes, which is truly unacceptable when it comes to this material. No one likes the goo all up in their mouth. They want to get that spit out as they naturally don't feel like it should. Uh, some assistants, especially if you're taking these for like dentures or you want to capture all the different vestibule areas, they'll do a little bit of border molding where they'll take their hand after they go and put it in there and they'll just go and push on the cheeks or they'll go and try to massage the material up into the vestibular area to go and get these good mucosal folds so that when they're making a denture, they have all the information that they need to pour a proper cast. As you might be moving on to after we learn how to take impressions, is pouring up your actual models. Now one of the most important things that comes to this is when do I take it out? How long has this been in here? How long have I been whispering sweet nothings into their ear and they still haven't given me a shot? Well. Let's go ahead and check our material that you might still have some on your glove or you might have some on your spatula that you had a moment ago. And this is starting to feel pretty firm. A good key kind of sign to be able to see if you're ready. If you take your nail, of course through your glove, right? And if you go and just push on that alternate just a slight bit, it should bounce back. If it impresses your nail, it's still trying to capture a form and it's not ready yet. And mine's bouncing back right now, so now I can go and take this out. Word to the wise that you want to be ready for this. Apart from them having all this goo in their mouth, they're going to start salivating a lot. So it's nice to have the saliva ejector nearby or have a paper towel for the instance where we're going to be pulling out and a lot of gooey saliva is going to be coming out with it. And with that, I'm just going to go and hold my paper towel, take my impression by the hand, and I'm going to go and rock it a little bit. With that, go in and sneaking it, one of my fingers in there. You can use your long one, you can use a short one, whatever fits, get it in. And I'm just going to go right up into the mucosal area and I'm just going to go and dislodge it from the top. And you'll feel and hear a suction go on. And now I've broken that seal. And with that seal broken, I can go and rock the other side and then come out. And as I pull out, I'm going to hold my paper towel right underneath because it's going to drag a bunch of goo out. And with that, because your patient's going to be covered in this white stuff and no one wants to have that on their mind, we're going to go and give them a wet paper towel. This is going to go and clean themselves up. Ain't that right, sir? I got you. Don't worry. And we can go take a look and admire our impression that we took. At the moment, I have it right here, and let's go and see what that looks like. Not too bad. I got all my ridges. I got my vestibular area all around this maxilla. Of course, this guy's kind of a cheater because he doesn't gag on me or anything. But I have not too bad of information. I got all my teeth captured all the way back to the third molars, which I'm not going to really need anyways as far as uh, doing anything restorative. Uh, but we do have a little bit of show through right here on this canine. Something to keep in mind when we're actually seating the tray to avoid uh, to avoid putting too much pressure on it. Apart from that, we just go and do the next step of cleaning this up. I'm gonna go and wrap this with a paper towel, hit it with some disinfectant so that the next person doesn't contract any of the good stuff that this person has going on in their mouth. Keep it wrapped and inside some type of plastic Ziploc bag so that it doesn't dry out. And that's what we're gonna go and do and move on to our second. And a lot of times because I'm prepared with my next material in hand, I'm just gonna go and keep this in the bowl that I brought earlier, and now I'm gonna go and switch to my second one and go and take my next impression. Because I already have it ready, my patient might be ready for round two now that they clean themselves up. Let's go mess them up once more and get that lower impression. Well, thanks for seeing this off to the end. Well, how about going from impressions to actually pouring up to make a study model or a bleach tray model or whatever you may need it for. And from there, we'll see you on the next Dental Things. Take it easy.